Hello everyone, welcome back to my Realism Overhaul tutorials in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I continue in my bare bones install with a minimum of mods included as I installed in the first video of the series. And we have mostly stock parts except for procedural parts and procedural fairings. So the parts to a stock player should be all familiar except they have been remade and renamed in the image of Real Fuels and Realism Overhaul. So. The question is, can we build a shuttle in this install? Or do you need some complicated mod like the space shuttle system or something like that? Uh, which would look fancier, but could we make a Mark III space shuttle like we would in stock and have it work out? And how complicated would that be? So there's a tutorial on making space shuttles. And I don't know if it'll work, actually, but there are promising signs. First of all, we have the Mark III parts, obviously. And second of all, we have the AJ-10190, which is the shuttle's OMS engine. And we also have, because of the vector, the RS-25, which is the space shuttle main engine. We also have the boosters, the RS, well, that's the booster. Uh, that's the one for SLS. This is the booster. Okay, so we have the engines. Now, can we make the rest of it? So, uh, let's try and do that. Actually, uh, you might be may or may not be surprised to know that the most annoying thing is probably going to be the RCS, but they did add, uh, previously they had made this RCS block the most powerful one, this uh, 890 Newton one. That would not be in the same class as the shuttle RCS. However, they've added new classes to it, and actually probably this would be enough. Uh, that is close to the two kilonewton thrusters that the shuttle would use. Unfortunately, they you know sort of stick out. That's the one downside of that. We don't have conformal RCS thrusters among the stock thrusters, so that'll be mildly irritating. Okay, so obviously we have the shuttle and we want a nose cone. Another thing to consider is the heat tolerances not being enough, right? Uh, this skin max temp is not good enough for our purposes, and we don't even have tweak scale on it. So we should go with a procedural one for that. Still, we have a bit of a heat shielding problem. So at this point, I'm thinking maybe we're going to continually lose the nose cone because what we want is the skin max temp of 2273 at least. Probably even better than that would be good. Maybe if there's a high heat tolerance fuel tank, we could shape it as a cone. Shielded. This one would be good. So, we're not going to be using a nose cone. We're going to be using the shielded tank because we have no choice. And it does have this offset option, which is sort of nice. Maybe a slight offset downward would be good. Okay, uh, so this uh, structural or fuselage, um, we don't really need to fill it. What we might want to do is color it. And light gray paint, uh, maybe a little bit grayer. This is picky, of course. Uh, then we would have the bay. I think we'll go with a five unit cargo bay like that. I think that'll get us closer to the right size. I think we should get... Well, I don't know if we're going to have enough uh, fuel capacity, so I'm going to add this Mark III fuselage just in case. Uh, it might not be necessary. And then the Mark III engine mount. Again, it doesn't look super like the shuttle, but it's a start. And this does have the three mounting points, which is nice. These sort of don't fit. <laughs> There's a little bit of a discrepancy here. I would like the RS-25D slash E. That's the upgrade version of the RS-25. If you want an early version of the space shuttle, you'll use one of the earlier ones. Not these ones in the middle, though. Not those sub-configs. Those are special purpose only. Okay, and then the amount that we want to tilt these up by is 10 degrees. So hold shift and then two clicks. Okay, and then let's space them out a little bit better. And tuck them in as well. Okay, so that's a start. Our mass is not too far off from what we might expect. The space shuttle without anything in it and no fuel might be about 70-ish tons, a little bit more than that. So we certainly want procedural space plane wings. And we'll start with a vertical stabilizer here. And this will be in two parts. One, a straight part at the bottom. 
I mean, this space plane wing, if we have tweak scale, would be good, but this space, uh, the fin doesn't have tweak scale, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, I, I wonder about that. They used to. <laughs> used to. But might be a little bit thin. Okay, then control surface space plane for the rudder. So we can't get exactly right, looking exactly right, but that's the basic so, sort of feel of it. So I'm not looking at a reference photo. We'll do this in two pieces, but this looks pretty good to me so far. So pressing J in order to get this dialog. Uh, I covered that in a previous video, but just to remind you. And of course you might decide that you want extra wing pieces to make it look even more like the real thing. So you could have the curved end of, of it or something like that. But I'm just going to go with two pieces to keep it simple. And the, the wing tends to be pretty thick, so we can change the thickness here. One downside to using the Mark III parts is it's not flat at the bottom. And then two control surfaces. Okay, so there's a rough, rough approximation. The wing probably should be maybe a little bit smaller. I think I've made a very big wing. But uh, that's okay for now. And we could adorn it with the docking port arrangement in the front, the airlock. So we could do that and use the old stock trick in order to increase the crew capacity like that. So maybe I'll do that. So we're going to have the real attachment point, just one. Let's see, we'll have the Mark II crew cabin and the Mark II clampatron. And then we'll have a capacity for eight kerbals. It's poking out just a little bit. So we're going to have to have some creative tucking here. And I don't know if this docking port is compatible with the others, if it's a NASA docking system or something like that. So, because all the docking ports have been changed by Realism Overhaul, hopefully this docks to some of them. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm not too sure which one. Maybe it's an A-Pass, because the, actually the shuttle used A-Pass. But if you note these docking uh, ports, there's a NASA docking system, that's a Apollo docking system, that's A-Pass. They don't all dock to each other. And the question is, is this one of them? It doesn't say. So, which one is it? I mean, which one would we dock to? In theory, it should be A-Pass for the shuttle, but uh, I'm not too sure. Okay, now we're at 58 tons, which is closer, but it's actually not, you know, the full size of the shuttle. We haven't put the landing gear yet, though. That's a tough one, because we can't... The look of the landing gear, of course, the shuttle's main gear has two wheels, but if we have two-wheel landing gear, it looks like that, and it's too small. Uh, so, yeah. One of the first things we're going to add is adjustable landing gear once we add other mods. Clearly, we have a bit of a wheel problem. We're going to just... Oh, that's so horrible. Uh, we're just going to deal with that for now. Uh, I absolutely understand if instead of doing a very stock shuttle like we're doing here, you decide to go ahead and put adjustable landing gear right away. So that looks a little bit better. So where we want it is behind the center of mass. That's fine. Actually, the center of mass is unfortunately a little bit too far forward right now. I thought the SSMEs would pull it back a bit more. That's concerning. But we haven't put the OMS either. But the OMS system is not very heavy without its fuel. With its fuel, it's heavy, but without its fuel, it's not. In stock, I would use these NCS adapters, but they're not big enough here. Also, they seem to be misconfigured. Not my fault, but uh, they seem to have two tank UIs, folks. Um, realism over all peoples. There's a mistake on these. So, we'll just use a procedural fuel tank in this case. It's tough to get the exact shape right, because it's sort of a flattish shape, and I don't think we're going to get that. And we'll have to clip it in a little bit to get the right sort of feel for it. 
So the one I used was the round number three, and this looks pretty good. And we want a uh, high pressure, um, I guess high pressure refined will be fine. But, you know, since we need more mass in the back anyway, I'll put make it a high pressure aluminum gridded tank like this. Maybe I should have just gone conventional structure. Or, well, they have heat shielding on it, so maybe I should use a shielded tank instead. I think that's a good idea. We could sort of use the offset to our advantage here, too. And recoloring UI, white-ish. Light gray might be a little, well, a little bit lighter than that would be good. Of course, we'd like the black tiles on the front or something like that, and the wings will have to be done. But anyway, that's a start. And then the OMS engines, which are the AJ-10-190s. And, wow, well, they look really big. <laughs> um, seriously, though? By whose imagination did they get this big? They weren't this big before. I mean, like, this is recent. <laughs> I think they tried to make these things like the OMS tanks or something. I don't know what they were thinking. Uh, no, they're not this big. They're not this big when they're in the OMS system. I mean... I would understand if it's for Orion's Orion's service module, but the shuttle's OMS engines were not this big. I mean, obviously, we've got nozzles that are as big as... Who did this? <laughs> uh, the, the nozzles are as big as the SSMEs. This is ridiculous. Anyway. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, you know what? I think it is time to fix this. Before I do that, I'm going to save. So we'll just call it Space Shuttle. We're getting closer to the target mass, by the way, so that's good. Okay, this was intended to be a sort of basic tutorial in things, but we are suddenly going to be looking at the configuration files of things. And this is in the Realism Overhaul folder, RO Suggested Mods, Squad, and this is the file RO underscore squad engines dot config. And if you scroll down to line 284, you'll see the section AJ-10-190. And they have rescaled it to 4.583333333. We're going to ignore that. It says default model scale 2.4. You know what? That sounds good to me. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with uh, rescale factor. First of all, rescale factor I don't like anyway. Um, but we'll use it. And I do suspect that there's something else going on here, too, but I'm just going to change that one and see if it works, and I'm going to restart the game. Fortunately, with such a bare-bones install, it doesn't take long to restart the game. And, well, the puff engines... Oh, they look about right now. So, whoever changed it from 2. I think they were making it for Orion, which has... That one has a bigger nozzle. Obviously, on the shuttle, it didn't have that big a nozzle, and 2.4 is correct. When it has the little pod and it's meant to be radial so it says radial we have plenty of other aj 10190s if it's the radial one you shouldn't change it so that it is that big <laughs> it's uh, it's not meant to be the oh uh, it's not meant to be the service module engine for orion okay so they are already tilted the way they are so that they point through the center of mass of the shuttle though we do have a bit of a center of mass problem with the shuttle right now in that the relationship of things is dragging the center of mass forward from where I think it ought to be, which is a little bit further back. Body flap. Uh, maybe don't snap. 1.6 sounds good. And the main job is to protect the engines, though who knows if that'll happen. Uh, we certainly don't want it tilting up. This we will have doing pitch, but not anything else. This we will have doing pitch and not anything else. This we'll have doing pitch and roll. If you can have something doing pitch, you should probably have it doing pitch. And this we'll have just doing yaw. Okay. So we haven't put the fuel in. And we're almost there. And I'm tempted to put some lead weight in this Mark III fuselage in order to add... A I'm thinking about five more tons. Is there anything else I'm missing here? We haven't put the RCS ports, but they're not going to be very heavy. Mm. 
I don't want to put lead because it tends to disappear and you tend to forget about it. We do have to have the fuel cell fuels and the fuel cells. So that would be a good start. If you want, we can add the hydrazine for the APUs. Fuel cells. I will put them in the back of the bay because, well, right now our job is to drag that center mass back as much as possible. And we actually want the big ones. This, uh, this shuttle had two, uh, three that produced seven kilowatts. Uh, the, even these fuel cell arrays only produce 4.5 per second. So we're looking at three of these in the back here. I'll just put them in the bay like this. Seems like a good idea to have a docking port in the back as well for our eventual payloads. Okay, well, we still need some extra stuff in the back. If we fill this up with avgas, it's still not pulling the center mass back far enough. We are about the mass of the actual shuttle. So this is a little bit concerning. Oh, I've got to put the tanks in. This will be a fuselage tank so that we can fill it with the AJ-10 fuel. Oh, well, that's much better, isn't it? <laughs> um, that's probably a little bit too much. Let's see. I'm going to go by burn time. So we don't need that much. We want about 13 minutes. That's about right, about 13 minutes like that. The numbers, uh, you can get the exact numbers from the realism overhaul configuration for OMS engines for the space shuttle system if you want them. So what you would do is you would go into the realism overhaul folder, into RO suggested mods, and into the space shuttle system folder, and then get the omspod.config. So if we take a look at omspod.config, We'll see that it has 2,992 for the MMH and 3,035 for the Mon 3 and then some helium. So we can just type that in if we want to. But we could, uh, we'll just go by the 2,992 for the MMH and let's see if we can hit that. Um, I'm going to call this close enough. And I'm just got not gonna bother too much out with it more than that. And that gets us closer here if we move the landing gear back. I think that's good enough to start off with. So we have our shuttle, except for the RCS system. I'll use these. And they need to be MH and Mon 3. Just pump them up as much as possible. And to be honest, we want to... Maybe, maybe we should use the independent ports. The problem is, with these ports, uh, we do not have the larger thrusters. See, they top at 890 like they used to. And these attitude jets are too small too. So... We are left with these... Four-way ports as being our only option. So for now... Uh, until we add some other mods that might be able to spruce this, spruce this up and I'll try and see maybe that'll be our priority for actually adding mods to this is stuff that will make the shuttle look a little bit better but not go all out with the space shuttle system or something like that functionally speaking we also need the uh, ones that go out this way so we will put extra attitude jets one way ones like that these girders could be one way of doing it, but we can now use sort of a cubic tank. And we'll have it shielded too. For this, we can select polygon with four corners and make it black. And the ends can just be black as well. You could get it to taper a little bit, that'd be nice, but it's enough. And the goal of these is just to get the RCS beyond the wings. Oh, so that'll give them more leverage. And then let me just copy the ports since we already have them for 
MHMon3. Technically, the forward facing ones wouldn't be there. But we do still want the side ones, and we might want two of those since they are underpowered compared to the way they ought to be. And so we'll have two up here too. Okay, that's a start. It might all blow up because of heat tolerances, but it is a start. Our mass seems pretty realistic. And we should just paint the wings. Now, I wish I could use the old procedural parts textures for the wings instead of the recoloring UI because they had sort of an automatic color that was more ideal to the situation. They had R uh, HRSI tile coloring. This wasn't great, but it was okay. Um, I don't know if this section is... I mean, leading edge and trailing edge, at least we've got that going for us. We could have leading edge be gray surface includes the bottom so we don't have a distinction between the top and the bottom which the old procedural parts textures did uh, they could have something different on the top and bottom I don't know what this section is Try black paint there well it's not the bottom so it's our problem there but I think we'll go with white wings overall. It's white. And then the control surfaces will have black. And then of course the vertical stabilizer should be mostly white except for the leading edge. Okay, that's looking alright for now. Oh, we've got the drag chutes. We can put the drag chutes. It's up to you how you want to deal with that, but we'll just put two of them rather than one of them. Redundancy is good, so drag, drag, so click on the shoot and then you get the real shoot dialog here, and we can input the craft mass or just use current craft mass, probably safer this way. Plan landing speed, 100 is fine, want a deceleration, maybe 15, and we're using 2. Oh. I didn't do apply to all symmetry counterparts, okay there we go. Hopefully they're nice and equal. And other than that, we want the SSMEs first. And then the RCS ports and OMS. I might be forgetting some RCS ports, forgive me for now. Okay, there's the general idea of the whole thing. So, save, and let's go to the VAB. Landing gear is going to chafe, but... <laughs> Alright, so now we have to do the external tank and the boosters. The boosters are largely done for us. It's not like in stock where the boosters are never quite ideal. In this case, we have the right boosters. So, we want a radial decoupler. Uh, isogrid structure is probably... I mean, you could go balloon. The, the external tank is very light. And what we want is many different tanks. So... 8.4 meter diameter. Same as SLS, by the way, of course. And we're going to get aluminum lithium gridded tanks. That's eventually. If you want the earlier external tanks, it won't be aluminum and lithium. And we're going to have four, four tanks total. And we might need to go outside for this. We're going to have this. We're going to have one at the bottom that tapers. So it's going to be a round, a smooth cone tank. 8.4 meters. Sort of like that, but, you know, not, not great there. That's a little bit better. Round one is okay. And then so we're going to have the cylinder and then the top bit. And the top bit is going to be a smooth, no, sorry, peat cone with oops, it'll reverse now. Uh, you could put a separate nose cap bit there if you want the different color. Okay, so there's the basic layout. 
and then of course recoloring let's just go orange for now unfortunately there aren't well it says orange foam here this is this orange foam okay there's that orange foam and this this orange foam light so we'll do that orange foam shape texture so using legacy textures gets you the old textures for these and I don't think we have exactly the right thing here there used to be a legacy procedural parts texture that would have the right stripes and if you add some of the other packs you should get that but let's just have it a different color for now just to signify that that's the inner tank portion and then this is the oxygen tank but we'll put some of the oxygen because the oxygen tank actually goes partly into here so this will be a shared bit okay so I'm going like that for now and what we want is about eight minutes of burn time you could get the exact amount uh, as before you can go into the space shuttle system folder and look at the external tank so let me just grab that. So same folder in RO suggested mods. This is the external tank here. ET tank, ET. And it's got that much hydrogen and that much oxygen. So uh, we can probably just copy that number. Control C. And in here we have, I mean, I've magically got about the right volume. <laughs> I wonder how that might have been. Uh, almost the right volume. It's supposed to be 1.47 megaliters. So I'm going to extend the length a little bit to 1.48. And then tank UI, hydrogen, and I'm going to control V. And now I've got exactly the right amount. Well, exactly what they had. I've Hopefully they've got the number right. And I'm going to copy the oxygen number, which is about 550,000 liters. Now that's nine, this isn't enough for it. That's why I said we're going to use some of this. So we're going to just fill this up with oxygen. And it's important to have the oxygen and hydrogen separate because that keeps the center of mass high in the stack. And I'm gonna use the calculator. Yeah, paste control V the number I got from the configuration into the calculator and then subtract what we've just got here which is 368.185.21 and then I get 180,700 so we can get that much in here 180,700 okay so now we should have well, uh, let's see now. We need cross-feeding on this. Or we could just have a fuel line. They have the umbilicals back here, so if you want to sort of simulate that, we can have a fuel line back here. Okay. It says uh, 7 minutes and 34 seconds. That's fine. Um, the shuttle thralls down, and we want 8 minutes, so that'll probably end up being about right. And so we have that all set up and now we can put the boosters on. If you want separatrons on here that might be a good idea uh, otherwise we're gonna have to use RCS on the shuttle in order to push ourselves away. And well, one other thing I haven't done is the shuttle's wings are actually tilted up a little bit and it's a little bit bad of me to do it right now but I'm gonna do it right now. So holding down shift like that just one tick or five degrees the trick Okay, now the boosters. So we're doing, we're building this by analogy to the real thing. And then we'll see how it works. I haven't tried it out yet, I'm just building it right now. But of course I've built the shuttle many times before. So RSRM, not the RSRMV, which is the five segment one. Though if you want to try that out and see how it goes, that's another option. They look a little bit thin, don't they? I guess they couldn't avoid that. They'll have the right stats, but I think they're they are a little bit a little bit thin, and that's because of the shape of the. Hmm. Well, anyway, let me verify. Shape of the model. They couldn't figure out how to fix that. The real boosters are three point seven five meters. So these aren't too too thin, but they're just a little bit thin. So 3.7, not 3.75, 3.7 meters. 
I think it was 3.71 or something. So they're just, or maybe they were judging from the bottom and it's actually the main body of it that's 3.7, but it's a little bit too pointy, isn't it? Maybe it's better to use the tanks. <laughs> maybe it's better to use the tanks just so that we can have the top number and then have a separate segment. Okay, so then we have those, and we definitely need Separatrons for the boosters. I think these medium ones might be good. These seem a bit strong, but for decisiveness, I guess we'll try them out. So the key is to actually push him away from the shuttle. So they'll be staggered like this. Something like that would be good. In fact, uh, the shuttle crews saw the flash of the separatrons or separation motors from the cockpit, so... That's nice that the collider works down here too. And another one up here what might be good. About halfway between the other two. I don't know, I think the thinness of the boosters is just messing, messing with me a little bit, but... Anyway, we will see. Hope I've got them on right. Technically, the whole shuttle stack was clamped by the boosters. You may or may not want to do this. We'll take it outside and find out. Uh, we do not have any cargo in the bay though. Let's actually put some in. I've used a NASA docking system there. And we'll have my traditional avgas in a fillet cylinder tank. Let's say 23.45 tons. Okay, well that certainly cut into our Delta V's. I think it is time to see how it goes. We have our Mark III shuttle in Realism Overhaul. Is it any good? I still feel... maybe I put these... Does it look like the set patrons are a little bit too much to this side? I mean, it just looks like the boosters are too much to this side, right? Anyway, let's just launch. 